That's right, the HPS Domestic is actually an e-bike. HPS High Performance Systems is a new direct-to-consumer brand out of Ireland. They have Irish owners, Irish designers, an Irish frame builder, but their headquarters is in Monaco. The Domestique that I have here is their first offering in the road bike category and is the result of a partnership with component and wheels manufacturer Campagnolo. In keeping with the traditional name, the Domestique is a handcrafted custom carbon fibre frame with traditional looking round tubes, but that's where tradition ends. The bike is equipped with a Campagnolo e-car one bag group set with a 44 tooth front chainring paired to a 936 rear cassette. Unsurprisingly given the Campagnolo partnership, the Domestique is delivered with Campag's new Shamal carbon wheels. In keeping with these more modern additions, HPS have selected 28mm Pirelli P0 tyres with a beautiful tan sidewall. Clearance is tight, but we've been assured that there is room to fit up to a 32mm tyre. The test model seen here is a 56cm with a stack of 567mm and a reach of 388 That results in a frame slightly shorter and higher than my usual road frames. Pair this with the long 420mm chainstays and the result is a bike that feels like it is designed for ticking off summer miles in comfort. The colour seen here is the launch edition model and will be available on a limited run of just 21 bikes. This pre-production model features a Campagnolo logo on the head tube which will be replaced with a HPS logo for the final version. HPS have been developing this technology for the better part of a decade. The company has worked closely with former F1 engineer Gary Anderson in creating the system. The result is a lightweight seat tube mounted motor and gearbox capable of a peak 230 watts and a sustained 200 watts of assistance with 20 newton meters of torque. This is powered by a 193 watt hour 6.7 amp hour battery disguised as a bottle. The battery comes in two versions with the larger option seen here weighing in at 1.2 kilos. HPS also offers the smaller battery option is the only safe and legal e-bike battery for travel by air, which weighs in at 720 grams and offers 85 watt hours. These numbers don't sound huge, but the whole system adds just 1.5 kg to the total weight and has a claimed 133 watts per kilo. The control buttons are hidden beneath the bar tape on the handlebars. The HPS connects directly to your Garmin or other head unit to display your current mode of assistance on screen. The battery can be fully charged in just over an hour and the simple action of adding or removing the bottle is all that is needed to convert this road bike into an e-bike. We've come to the Glen Bray Road just outside Derry here and we're going to test just how much assistance the HPS Domestique can give us. I currently have the KOM segment for this climb from last summer when I took it on a much warmer day when I was in a lot better condition and admittedly on a lighter bike. So we're going to see today if the HPS and its e-bike system can help me beat my KOM time. Go, go, go! We broke it. Five or six seconds. Oh my god. Just that last bit. Yeah. The lack of top end fitness really got me, but oh my god. I think it just shows what the what the motor was doing. True what they say. It never might get faster but it never gets any easier. Even with a motor, I'm literally blown away by the power this thing has.
All right, Ronan, having now watched that video, I have questions for you. Now, besides the fact that it was clearly really cold on this day that you were doing this ride in the video shoot, um, I have some I have some questions on the bike itself. I mean, this thing, yes, it's an e-bike, um, and it's clearly different from systems that are already out on the market, like from Foswell or Bosch. Uh, but it seems to have some similarities to the the VVAC system that is is that the company is now out of business. So, how exactly does this thing work? And is it like an e assist system where you have to pedal, or can you just push the button and get power out of it? Yeah, I suppose you know it's um, the the obvious difference is that this system is very much integrated into the bike, and and it isn't obvious from looking at the bike that it that it is an e bike. You know, apart from the bottle which houses a battery, there's no other obvious indicators that you're looking at an at an, at an e bike. Um, it is very sus- similar to the VVAC system. Um, the the motor is within the seat tube, the electronics unit is within the the down tube, and then uh, there's a a pinion gear on the the crank spindle which effectively drives uh, or gives you an extra uh, up to 200 watts and it isn't it is pedal assist if you're you know if you're not contributing the motor isn't going to give you any contribution either so it is still a a, a pedal assisted e-bike so is it loud can you hear it running when you're pedal when you're riding and the system's active you can you can certainly hear it, and if you're riding with someone, they would hear it. But it's in no way distracting, or you know, it's it's not a it's not an overly loud system at all. In fact, it doesn't really de- detract from your ride at all. It's, it's you just know it's there. It's. I mean, all of these e-bike systems have a a speed cutoff where you know if you go above that speed, that you just don't get any assistance. So, what is that number for this bike? And when the system cuts out, is there extra drag from the, you know, are you basically driving the motor when the system isn't running? So yeah, the, for myself here in Europe, the, the limit is 25 kph. And, you know, that, that's another topic that perhaps we haven't got time to get into today, whether that's right or wrong. But uh, if I, I had the same sort of fear that, you know, when the motor's not helping you, it's it's effectively working against you. Um, so I asked HPS, you know, what what kind of extra drag is 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 being created by this motor in the in the seat tube if it's not being used? And they're fairly sure that there's pretty much zero drag. There's obviously going to be a tiny bit from. Uh, well, this is what they say from adding a, a, a motor into the seat tube, but effectively they've got a clutch system that when you're pedaling forwards, they say creates no drag and. To test that, I took the chain off and put the bike on the stand and spun the cranks, and it does move remarkably freely. It's you know just like any other uh, modern day crank and bottom bracket system. There there doesn't seem to be any extra resistance in there. So, and while while riding it, I certainly couldn't feel any extra drag through through the pedals. I mean, it seems unlikely that anyone would ride this thing without the battery in place. I mean, if you're going to buy an e-bike, then more likely than not you want it for the motor um but i mean could you ride it without the battery in? like could you just ride it like a regular bike and you know presumably can you just stick a regular bottle in that cage well hps were fairly adamant that i ride the bike without the battery first because they say that they've put a lot of effort into making this as normal as standard road bike as possible when the battery isn't in there uh, and i can certainly it, 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 it did ride like a normal road bike I, I couldn't fault it that way the one thing they did say to me was you know add a normal bottle into that bottle cage if you like it it took the bottle no problem it you know i had a full bottle of water in there and um yeah i rode the bike for maybe two hours i have a a, a climb here close to the house that i use for everesting training i go up and down it and it was perfectly capable of riding up and down and and you know it's it's by no means a light enough uh, the lightest bike it's still over eight kilos without the the battery um but i certainly would would be happy to to ride it as a normal bike but i uh, don't think i ever would i think i would always put the battery in well like i said i mean if you were, if if anyone is going to buy an e-bike i mean the goal is to ride it with the motor on and not to just drag around all that extra hardware i, I mean overall did, did you like it i mean you like you're not exactly a, the typical e-bike rider, I would say. Um, you know, you certainly have more than enough fitness to get by just fine without it. But I mean, do do you see merit in it? Like, do you think people would want something like that, especially given how much it costs? Well, I think there's a certain stigma attached to e-bikes, especially for club riders. And for a long time, I've been a strong advocate of them, and I've always said that 
when I do lose my fitness, which you know inevitably will eventually happen, I will be an e-bike user to you know be able to move at this uh, with or train with the same groups that I always have and, and enjoy my bike as much as possible. Still feel like I'm having good days. So, um, with, from that point of view, I quite like the e-bike idea. I also quite enjoyed the HPS system. The, the limiter for me is is a big problem at, at the moment and that and that's not really a you know HPS they they have to add the limiter to it by by law so um that that's my only issue with e-bikes at the moment is that 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 25 kph is, is very restrictive and I find it's right about exactly where you probably need e-bike assistance you it, know it's so. right about where it's most frustrating. <laughs> Yeah, if you're at 26 k an hour and struggling in a group on a slight uphill drag, it's it's doing you no good at all. Whereas yeah, yeah. if you're at 25 k per hour and it's helping you, it's your the the group is riding away from you. So that that would be my frustration with e bikes at the moment. But this bike, I did I did uh, quite enjoy it. it. As I said in the video, I think it you know it left me feeling like a, a pure climber, which uh, I've never been. So um, yeah, from that point of view, I I certainly enjoyed it. I just want to point out that Ronan recently held the record for Everesting, and he just described himself as not being a pure climber. Anyway, that was a that was a time trial. All right, Ronan, who do you think this bike is for? Like, who's going to end up buying this thing? I think we need to, to answer that question. We need to back up a bit and think about why they have integrated so much of the system and tried to make it so light. And initially, I thought that was you know to hide the system to to disguise the fact that it's an e-bike. But HPS say that they're very open about e-bike systems they have helped the uci develop that ipad scanning system that we see the the commissaires using um, and and they what, what hps are saying is that this is an e-bike for an experienced bike rider it's not for uh commuting it's it's not for someone getting into the sport with the assistance of an e-bike um which are very which uh, i'm I think e-bikes have huge potential in, but what they're saying is this is a, a road e-bike for either former racers or, you know, someone who is maybe losing their fitness or maybe has a few many too many birthdays on the clock or something, or <laughs> I'm pointing no fingers. <laughs> um, but yeah, for, 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 a for a, a connoisseur, I suppose it would be the, would be the, the term to use. Ronan, I mean, having, having just, been riding the, that new Campanella egg car group for quite a while. I mean, it's it can be used as a road group set, obviously, but it's really meant to be a gravel group set. Um, is there a reason why HBS used this on that bike? Yeah, it sort of struck me as slightly peculiar. The gravel specific group set was was on an e road bike, but so I asked HBS, you know, was there a reasoning for that? And the the thing that th that they found was that with a with a two by system up front, when you shift the front to rear to to change from the big to the small chain ring or vice versa, you instinctively let off a bit of the torque just to sort of smooth the the shift between chain rings, and apparently an e bike system doesn't understand that's what's happening, so it sort of eases off the assistance a bit, and yeah, the the whole uh, process gets a bit jumpy, I believe. So what they wanted to use a one by system. And then, you know, with the partnership with, with Campagnolo uh, and the new ACAR group set being won by, I suppose that's that, that that was a good fit then, that, uh, given that they did want to use a won by system. Okay, well, fair enough. I mean, it's for, as far as e-road bikes go, I mean, one by up front's kind of the norm anyway, so I guess it's not that unusual. The only one thing I found was that with the 936 rear cassette, and I'm a bit of a traditionalist, so... Perhaps it wouldn't be for everybody, but for me personally, I found the jumps too big in the rear cassette, and and that seemed to have the same effect on the motor. That there was that little bit of, especially riding around, I didn't notice it, but going for the Strava segment when I was full gas uh, and I shifted gear, I did notice a bit of a lag then before the motor could get back up to the same level of of assistance, and and I had everything turned up to the max. I was going full gas, the motor was turned up to the max and everything and, and that was when I did notice it so the jumps are still there whether it's one by or two by all right well it looks like we have yet another development in the continuing evolution of e road bikes and I guess we'll see how this thing develops I mean you know we're, again we have all these various systems from all these companies right now and this is yet another player so it'll be interesting to see if HPS manages to play with the big companies that are out there 
If you like this video, please leave us a comment. Please hit subscribe so you never miss another video from Southkin Tips. And thanks for watching.